I've recently bought a new gaming monitor and this monitor's got all kinds of goodies on it. It's got a 1 millisecond response time, 360Hz, G-Sync, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But I mainly got this monitor because of the built-in latency analyzer. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about it and then I'll let you know whether it's worth it or not. If you have seen my past latency test videos, there are two tests that I do. One is the end-to-end -end system latency test. And in this test, I use a super slow motion camera to capture the button press and the action on screen. And the other test that I do is measuring the latency of just the controller. And in this test, I use a utility that measures the polling rate of the controller and that will tell how responsive the controller is. Now what's cool about this monitor is that the latency analyzer can tell both. It'll tell you the latency of the input device, the PC plus display latency, the system latency, and it'll also tell you the render latency as well. So it's got a whole bunch of metrics for you to look at. Honestly, when I found out about this thing, I thought it was a dream come true. I was thinking that this thing's going to save me so much time. I mean, doing the slow motion camera test, it's just so slow and tedious and it takes forever. So I really thought that this monitor was going to be the answer to my prayers. But when I started to use it and learn how it works, things kind of fell apart for me. For one, this thing only measures mice. And not just any mice, but it has to be supported mice. So if your favorite mouse is not on this list, you're out of luck. Furthermore, most of these mice don't support wireless mode. So as you take a look here, most of these are not supported, which is a shame. Keyboards don't work on it, controllers don't work on it, or any other type of input device will not work on it. And I mostly use controllers to play fighting games, so this thing is of no use to me at all. So as far as how the system works, is the system has this box, and it measures the gun flash from the moment you press the button. Like that. But the issue with using the flash to measure input lag is this. It's not accurate. When you press the button, the flash is not the first thing that happens on screen. The animation is the first thing that happens on screen. So there's the trigger, the animation, and then the flash. So the latency result that you get here is not completely accurate. So with the pistol here, my average latency is about 33, 32 milliseconds. And then when I switch to the shotgun, all of a sudden it goes up to 37, 38. Now that wouldn't happen had the system actually measures the start of the animation versus a flash. Because the analyzer uses the gun flash to measure input lag, this means that you cannot use this for any other type of games aside from a type of game that has a gun in it. As you can see so far, there's a lot of limitations with this thing. This thing only works on PC with NVIDIA hardware. So if you're thinking of using the monitor to hook it up to a console, it won't work. And I get it, I get it. It's a proprietary thing, it's NVIDIA, you know, they want to sell their own product, they want to have their own ecosystem, I understand. But because of this, it kind of renders it not very useful, to be honest with you. And to be fair to NVIDIA, they are improving the system as we go along. Since I've owned this monitor, they've updated the analyzer where now it automatically detects latency without having you to set the flash box in certain supported games. But then again, the games have to be supported, right? So it limits, not expand usability. So here we go, there's a list here, and then some more games here, but really it's just a handful of games. This is really not enough. And then hopefully fighting games as well will make their way onto this list. My overall thoughts on this, I'm glad that this exists versus not existing at all. And hopefully more and more games will be supported in the future outside of competitive shooters. I also hope that they will add support for keyboards and controllers and other input devices as well. However, if I'm being real with you, I really don't see this feature being mainstream in the near future. 
It really is a niche thing. Only competitive gamers will care about stuff like this. And I really hope that I'm wrong. I hope this thing just takes off and every single game will support this feature. But if you take it for the way it is right now, it's just limitations upon limitations upon limitations. Everything has to be supported. Nothing works right out of the box. So if you're somebody who's curious like me and just want to check it out, I actually don't recommend buying a brand new monitor just for this feature. You should buy the monitor for the other features and if it happens to include this, then great. But I wouldn't buy a monitor exclusively for this feature. Alright, that's going to be it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and take care now.